This is the first video in section 5, Debugging and Performance Optimization. In the last section, we retrieved data from the server and looked at state manipulation with forms. In this section, we're going to take a look at performance optimization and debugging components. We'll look at shit component update and the perf add-on. Changes made to the page get supplied in a few steps. First, the components are rendered. This happens via the render function on each component. React uses the output of this to diff the DOM to determine the minimal DOM updates to make. Even though only the differences in the rendered component tree will be applied to the DOM, we still spend time rendering a bunch of components that didn't produce any new HTML. To skip rendering of a component, React provides the should component update function. By default, it returns true. We can override it to look at the props and state of our component and only return true if those changed. A good way to find bottlenecks related to voiceful renderings is to use the perf add-on. With it, we can get the components that was re-rendered without any change in their outputs. The add-on is primarily used in a console, so we'll expose React globally to access it there. I suggest only doing this in development mode. I'm using React slash add-ons here since the version of React I'm using doesn't expose all the add-ons as separate packages yet, but they should be as of the final release of React 014. When we transpile and look at the dev console, we get a deprecation warning about React slash add-ons. Ignore this for now, you should go away with the final release of 014. The emulate device warning is a current issue in Chrome, ignore that too. With React on the global window object, we can access react.addons.perf. Perf shines by being able to find components which didn't need to be re-rendered. Since our application is really simple, we don't have a lot of things going on. So I'll set up a quick render loop in the app component. This re-renders everything every 200 milliseconds to simulate a more complex application. Using start and subsequently stop on the perf add-on in the console records all the renderings. Print wasted is the most useful function which gives a table view of all components which was needlessly re-rendered because they didn't produce any new output. Since my contrived example just re-renders everything all the time without changing any HTML, we see all the components. You can imagine a bigger application where you recorded the renderings between several pages or through complex interactions. Anyway, the table also shows how much time was wasted on each component and how many instances of that component was created. Since there is an order row for each order, that one is ripe for overriding should component update. Should component update receives the next props and the next state that will get applied to the component if we decide to render it. We can simply compare the order that's in the props currently and the order that will be. Even though order is a complex structure, we gained another benefit of it being an immutable JS data structure. We can check the equality directly instead of having to use an expensive deep compare function. Having added that and rerunning the perf tests shows that the order row is no longer part of the wasted rendering list. We can add checks like this for a number of other components, for instance orders. While orders is a parent of the order row component, you could argue that the should component update on the order row component wasn't needed. But there are certainly instances where the list of orders changes, but not the order at a specific row. When we use the status filter, for instance. Again, the orders component also uses an immutable data structure, so comparison is really easy. Retesting removes both orders and orders table, which is a child of orders. Some components, like the main nav and the main header, won't ever need to update once they've been rendered. Later, when we add another page, that will change, but for now we can simply return false in the main header's should component update function, and it will skip it and the main nav. Finally, we're left with just the app component, which is the component that is doing all the updating. Perf is a really good tool for finding bottlenecks in your code. When you see some choppy performance and reduced number of frames, in many cases it can be solved by using shit component update correctly. In this video, we learned about shit component update and used the perf add-on to track down components suited for optimization. In the next video, we'll look at the React developer tools.